G'day guys, now I wanna talk you through my Nissan Patrol. Now, before I get into the video and show you this Patrol, what you may not know about my vehicle selection is I actually had ordered a Toyota Land Cruiser 200 series. Went in, ordered one, put a deposit down, and I had a delivery date. I had a specific time I needed that vehicle by. Toyota rang me up two weeks out and said, sorry, we can't deliver you that car. I said, that's fine. Can I just have a loan car until it's here? They turned back and said no. So the first thing I did, jumped onto the Nissan dealership, gave them a call, and they had a Y62 Patrol ready to go. Now, I had always liked the Y62 platform because no one was building them. There was sort of a car that, you know, it wasn't a turbo diesel. It was definitely a different choice vehicle with an independent rear suspension, independent front suspension, no solid axles. Th these cars are definitely not something that everyone would go out and buy and build. But I like the platform. I like the fact that I could do something different and I guess build something a little bit unique and everything that I sort of put into that wasn't necessarily off the shelf at the time. The other thing that I really liked about it is I knew Harrop had a supercharger kit available for it. So my first modification was actually the front bar. So first thing I did is I went out and got a front bar for it. I got some sliders, I got some underbody protection and a rear bar. That's almost like a stock standard thing I do with every single one of my cars. After that, straight down I went to Melbourne, to Harrop Centre, and we put the supercharger on it, stage two fuel kit. Now, on the hub dyno, so at the hubs, I was able to produce 542 horsepower at the hubs, and just a little bit over 680 newton meters of torque. Now, this thing is a weapon off-road. In some ways, it's probably a little bit too powerful off-road, but it's a lot of fun and it sounds really cool. So a couple other things that I've done to this vehicle, starting from the front, working down the back. So we've got the supercharger up front, we've got the ARB bar, I've got some Narvis bodies, a VRS winch. Just simple, basic stuff straight away. On the roof, I've got the Rhino rack with the backbone. I don't really carry a lot of weight up top. I usually just have a swag and a pair of the recovery boards on there and an awning. I've got my awning mounted. Around that, I've got a few spotties. I've got front spotty, rear spotty, and some sides for when I'm at camp, which is all linked up in through the dashboard. One of the things I love doing with vehicles is actually wiring them up and something I actually take a lot of pride in is I actually spend a lot of time getting all my wiring right, getting the 12 volt down to the back of the car. So I actually, in the back of my vehicle, set up all the 12 volt paneling in there and I bought a system called an ARB Lynx. Now this Lynx was just basically a module where everything plugs in. So everything communicates to the Lynx that's on my dashboard. So I got all the wiring in there. All I have to do is get 12 volt to it, ignition source, reverse light. So now that's my module for every single accessory I then want to bolt in after. I went to a 100 amp hour lithium battery in the back. I put a uh, DC-DC jump starter in there to power it, which is made by a projector. I've got a projector 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter in the back there. So I've got plenty of power to power all my 240 volt appliances I need for power. Now with that Lynx module, I wanted to just fill it all out. So I did go a little bit further and I ripped out the LSD in the back of this and e-locker that it had. And I put an air locker in the back and I've got an air locker up front. So that was um, a couple of the mods I did. Then I went over to the suspension. Now these things had what's called a hydraulic body motion controlled system, which is a fantastic system it's used in rallies. And I tell you what, it is a really smooth system. I want to do something different because I do a lot of off-road and there's a lot of weight in these vehicles. All that armor that you put on your car has a lot of weight before you even put any gear in there. So what I wanted to do is actually change out the suspension. So I worked out how to actually change this vehicle back down to an STL spec. By changing it back down to an STL spec, I had to put sway bars in, but it enabled me to actually put my own suspension choice in. So I upgraded to some BP51. So I've got the bypass shocks, total chaos uppers, I tell you what, it is an unbelievable system. It, it completely changed the way this four-wheel drive goes off-road, just soaks up bumps, loves sand. And once you dial in the valving on these things, I tell you what, you just watch the car sit perfectly flat and the wheels just take up all the, the bumps and the road and the terrain. Sometimes it can be a bit soft, which is why they've got the adjuster knobs on them. So you just grab your bar out and you can just adjust it, change the compression and rebound on them. And it's all done on the fly and it's stuff that you learn. So. These are a couple of little things that I've done to the car. I'll tell you what, it is probably one of the funnest cars I've had off-road. I've probably spent more money on this than I have anything else. And maybe I should have bought a 200 series or maybe I should have bought a Toyota, but I don't care. I have a blast out here. I love the hate I get for it because you know what? It's not the prettiest car on the block, but I don't care when I scratch it. So the other thing is this is a really heavy car. So going off-road, I tell you what, one of the things that people always seem to forget is your brakes. 
So I rung up DBA and they got me with their performance rotors and their performance off-road pads, and it's made a massive amount of difference. Like you're putting a lot of weight on the car, so upgrading the brakes is probably one of the key things you want to do. I'm running the uh, XD KMC wheels. I tell you what, it's probably one of my favorite wheels. I've had this set for a long time. It's bashed up. It's got gouges all the way through it, but I just love that wheel set. And running the uh, the mud terrain tires, um, I just always seem to keep going back to mud terrain tires. I just love riding them around, even on the beach, even though you're not supposed to. I still like them. They're just a cool tire to roll around on. Even though as cool as this car it might be, it does have its limitations. And I tell you what, there's a few things that frustrate me. The independent rear suspension, soft on road, and I understand the principle of it, but I have constant issues with smacking wheel alignment out. So after a couple of tough tracks, hitting a couple of rocks, I quite often find that my rear wheel will kick out a little bit. I'm getting extremely good at doing real alignments on the side of the road underneath the car. Um, the other thing is sway bar links. Because I ripped out all those hydraulic lines, I had to um, put sway bars in to make it legal. The sway bar link hands, under all the load and the weight of the vehicle, I was snapping them, so I upgraded them to Heim joint. So far, so good, touch wood. Um, but I, look, as a, as a platform, as an off-road vehicle, unbelievably capable. It just has those couple of little things that you just got to get used to. When you're off on the beaten track, you, you know that something's going to ha like this is going to happen. Just know how to fix it, and so far so good. Oh, and I did break one CV. Uh, one of my favourite mods, honestly, I do believe is the suspension in it. You know, I want to say the supercharger. I really do because it's cool. But I think the suspension, working out how to mod the system to put these shocks in there, it, it has changed the vehicle. So it'd have to be one of my favourite mods. It's also one of my biggest bugbears, but you know that's why it's your favourite mod, right? So one of the latest things we did, and in fact, we actually did it over on Morton Island as we upgraded the dash on this thing. And I tell you what, you couldn't ask for a better workshop to actually upgrade something on your patrol. And Kale from EC Off-Road came out and he put this new fancy dash in the car. And it put, you know, this car is probably still solid in the 80s with the interior. Like it's definitely, it's definitely in the 80s. It's not the prettiest interior. So putting this new state-of-the-art dash in there has changed the car, it's pretty cool. It's got all this automation, it's got all the information I need. On four wheel drive mode, I can know where my wheels are. And it's actually, you know, as gimmicky as sometimes these things sound, I tell you what, they are actually really handy off-road and they've got a lot of data and a lot of information and they're a lot better than your standard dash in there. Number, everyone, everybody always wants to know what the fuel economy is. And I'll tell you what, it's no Yaris. It's not a Tesla. It, it, it is a little bit thirsty. Um, so on average around town, I'm probably sitting at 20 to 21 litres per 100. On a highway at 100, I'm sitting at 20, 21 litres per 100. It's just consistent. You start the car, you know you're going to use a quarter tank of fuel. That's, hey, it is what it is. <laughs> so true. So the next mod for this thing, like I tell you, I, I do, I do really just want to use it a lot more. But storage, storage in a wagon, it just becomes a bit of a bugbear at times. I would love to chop this, and I'd love to put a short extension on it. I think the wheelbase on it's quite narrow. It's a really wide car, so I just find it kind of wanting to jump the front end up quite a lot. So I reckon if I could extend that wheelbase just ever so slightly, not a full 650 extension, I just want a little extension, I think it'll just change the way this car balances. Um, so I think the next thing, if I, like, everything going well, I would love to look at chopping, putting an extension on it, putting a canopy on the back, but I just want a basic canopy. I want to be able to just store a lot of gear and put a fridge in there. I don't, I don't want to go too far, you know, would I want a coffee pod machine in there? Yeah, maybe, maybe, but I, I do like my hand ground coffee, so maybe, maybe, not a, maybe not a pod machine. 